Hello and welcome, I Larissa Vaz is back to take you on a tour on the ongoing celebrations of Lights, Camera, Action at the 54th edition of IFI. Once again, let's see what happened on the day 5 across the IFI venues in the state. No festival is complete without its delegates and visitors. Team Herald spoke to several delegates and visitors who are attending this edition of Film Masti. Spanning diverse ages, these delegates share a common passion for cinema, making this festival a melting pot of varied experiences and perspectives. The delegate expressed her primary goal as actively participating in the festival and highlighted how the event has introduced her to numerous like-minded film enthusiasts. My first question is, what is unique about IFI this year? Uh, you know, we are getting very good films. We get a lot of uh, Viscom students, we get a lot of journalism students, you know. But there is some kind of racism is here. The first time when they met me, uh, the, I, I was the first one to be selected to give interview in uh, Peacock. That lady came all the way to me and I gave my name, little bit things about me, it has not come. Uh, that's okay, I am I'm world famous, you know. But they should not do that. They go for rich people, they go for North Indians, you know. That, uh, that's not good. Today I went and asked somebody, uh, I, I'll give an interview, you know. He said, he's interviewing everybody, he said, I'll talk to my boss and come back. And uh, water, they should allow water inside, you know. Without water, it's very difficult to watch a two and a half hours film. You know, it's very inhuman. You know, I don't get thirsty when they want me to be thirsty. I'll get thirsty when I, you know, when I feel like thirsty. It's very difficult. It's a very bad idea to not to carry water in the theater. Otherwise, films are very good. Atmosphere is very good. Uh, the volunteers are very good at the desk. Very nice. Very friendly. I get to see so many filmmakers, youngsters. I, I spoke to so many people. I saw a lovely film this morning. I saw another one called Moro Two Days Back, extraordinary from the Philippines. And I have selected some more films and you know, that I'm going to watch. 50% I come to meet people. You know, so I already met some 800 people for five minutes, ten minutes. And many of them know me here because of my sensational interview. Unique. If he is like a unique, not this year, not next year, not before year. So I love it. Fantastic atmosphere, fantastic film. Wow. Uh, I feel like always like a wow. What are your thoughts on the films presented at IFI 2023 so far? Yeah, I saw the films. It's very good. But I'm uh, busy with uh, people who and directors. So I'm at Philip Bazaar actually. Sometimes. Like what have you watched so far? Your favorite film? Any of them? Okay. You don't want to judge any yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And how is your overall experience about EFI 2023? The day here is a presentation and a colourful, colourful Bollywood, uh, colourful atmosphere. I love it. Uh, what is unique about IFI this year? IFI this year has a very nice uh, selection of uh, cinema from all around the world. And uh, I've been watching uh, two or three movies every day. And most of them are turning out to be very good. Like, what have you watched? So far, your favourite film in IFI? My favourite film, you know, I've been coming to IFI for the last 10 or 15 years. 
So my favorite films are East European films, you know, especially from Hungary, Poland, and you know, smaller nations like uh, Turkey, Croatia, Slovenia. So there's a nice selection of movies from you know all these areas. The best movie I've watched till now is uh, the Russian movie which I watched yesterday. It was called Hoffman's Fairy Tales, and uh, the actor, the actress who's the main lead in the film, as well as the the filmmaking is. It's absolutely the, the finest that you can imagine. Itself. Which film are you looking forward to watch today? Today I'm watching a movie called Fisherman's Daughter, which is at five o'clock. And there are other movies I'd love to watch, you know, but they're all sold out. So that's the that that's at three o'clock. You know, that's the last movie I'll be watching. Panelin. Director of Shallow Show or Last Film Show is no stranger to Goa. He always returns to his Goan home when he wants to focus on his writing and editing. Back for the International Film Festival of India, his film was screened last year and then headed to the Oscars as the Indian entry for the Best International Feature Film. Unfortunately, it didn't make to the final nominations, but it did give hope that the Oscar was within reach. Watch this exclusive chat with Team Herald. Uh, and that's becoming a fact worldwide. And uh, how long have you been working on this film? Uh, this film, in fact, not that long. But first time idea came in 2011 or 12. So long back. Yeah, because you know when I was visiting my parents, you know they said, hey, you should go and meet your friend. He's in a bad shape. So my friend was much older than me. He was a projectionist, a projectionist mm -hmm. you know, in a local cinema hall. So when I was a kid, I used to swap my lunchbox, you know, give it to him and he will let me watch free movies. <laughs> so Mari Dosti, you know, this friendship was there. Uh, and then I went away and, you know, he stayed on. And suddenly when I meet him, he said, I've been fired from my job because I don't know how to run computer because the theatres are going digital. You know, and then we realized he was not alone. There were two lakh cine employee associations lack of job. They were given no security. The whole film industry completely forgot them. And we shared a tea and I was kind of moved. And those days I started thinking, maybe there is something to be done, but it never really came up, came to me. Till 2020, I thought, okay, in a year or two, it will be 10 years of celluloid disappearance. It looks like hundreds of years ago or something, but just yeah. it was exactly like 11 years ago. You know, 10, you know, 2011, 12. We still had cinema in Goa. I remember showing 35 mm movie. You know, yeah. but it came so fast. It changed so fast. So, so that story of me losing his job, my childhood, lot of stories. My parents, family, friends used to say, "No wonder you are a filmmaker because as a kid." You had stolen film reels, you know, and you had ended up in a juvenile home, and you know, all these stories were floating around, you know, so I said, okay, there is maybe a film good film to make about this, and that way I can pay homage to cinema, it will be 10 years of disappearance of celluloid, but of course, because of pandemic, like the whole world, we got delayed, uh, but positive thing came out that luckily our story was already a feel good story, so people after pandemic really didn't want to watch anything dark, you know. So we found many more distributors from Japan to Australia to New Zealand, world over, who really loved the film. Uh, yeah, so, so so that journey was mainly 2019 and 20, making and raising the finance for the film. And then, you know, we couldn't do anything during the year of 2020 to 21, uh, before the film came out, yeah. All the offices and all the I mean, Everywhere, cinema hall were closed, and you know when we try to do mixing for our movie, uh, our uh, sound engineer, uh, you know, got COVID, so we went through a lot of. Yeah. How was your, uh, you know, can you speak about your connection to Goa because you have a music, so yes. you need song actually in your. Yes. Film yeah, film. yeah, I love it. So my connection goes back to a student days when I was at NID, National Institute of Design, and I was in a graphic design. And that time, Goa Tourism had asked NID to come and do map of Goa. This is like way back 25 years ago or whatever. So, and my teacher and three students came and we were assisting him and to design the map of Goa. So that was the best way to discover Goa because we were taken to every spot, 
with Goa Tourism, you know, we were hand drawing, there was not a big computer at yeah. that time. Uh, and we were doing cutting pasting all the sites, you know, and uh, making graphics and that old map, I'm sure it might be somewhere in archives. And then I went back, you know, and I had really so much, I liked the nature and the architecture and everything, the people at this world. And so I said, moment I finish, when I write my script, I'm going to go back to Goa. So, but ultimately it was a question of money. So then I was in Mumbai, yeah. so I did TV commercial. And the very first money I had, I had bought a house in Moira. Okay. You know, I was the only outsider. All these people are new. You know, there was nobody. You know, like whole Moira village used to come to meet me because I was outsider. <laughs> you know, and uh, I used to bring gift for them. You know, and they will bring me go on pickles and everything. And the reason I went to buy a house in Moira because that's the only place I can afford. <laughs> so when I met the real estate agent, it was very funny story. So he told me that look Moira, you know, a lot of go and don't like to buy property there because they think anyone who lives in Moira they go mad. <laughs> you must have heard this story. So the property is very cheap there. I said I'm very mad. I can go there. <laughs> the movie Sana, the biggest weekend of her professional life, only gets more complicated with Sana, a 28-year-old financial advisor working in Mumbai finds out that she is pregnant. Absolutely clear on her decision to terminate the pregnancy, the actual process of getting the abortion will force Sana to re-evaluate her life and delve deep if the choices she has been making have been really her own. The cast and crew spoke about their movie and importance of women empowerment. Watch. This film, Sana, premiered in the Melbourne Film Festival and appreciated specially for its cinematography. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being patient with us. So we've had a big night last night. It was the first time the film has ever screened in India. We've been traveling the world with it, starting in Tallinn, Estonia at the Black Knight Film Festival one year ago. And since then, have premiered and screened the film in almost every country around the world and been lauded for it and won so many prizes and showcased this amazing team. But the screening that I was most nervous for was the one in our country where our audiences, we would be screening it for them for the first time. And we all got the dream we had been wishing for in this phenomenal iffy audience. That room was charged with love and passion and it was so thought provoking and we're still buzzing from all that energy. So we're very grateful to iffy for giving us this platform for selecting us in the panorama section, for nominating us in the international competition. It's a matter of tremendous honor and privilege and really, really reflective of how inclusive if he is and how it champions all kinds of voices and all kinds of stories. Absolutely. It yes. means the world to us. Yes. I agree. I think that I would like to repeat that thank you, Ify. I think that when there is so much talk about uh, creative voices being curtailed in our country, and then when we hear it, if he with a movie like Sana, which unflinchingly looks at life, uh, makes you walk in the shoes of Sana, played brilliantly by this young lady, Radhika, uh, I think that it says a lot more. So I think eventually we are what we do, not what we say we will do, and we are what we make. So I don't know how many of you have uh, not seen Sana. I won't say how many of you have seen Sana. But I think that the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. And when you see this labor of love that is, you know, been put out there, I think the film speaks. It's the most wholesome experience of my life. I completely changed as a person and as an actor. And uh, it's because of this creature sitting right beside me. Uh, <laughs> I was... Uh, I think, I think we chased being uncomfortable every single day because we knew that on the other side of it is growth. And that is what we did, be it in, in, in our thought process or in a scene. We always thought that, oh, are you feeling comfortable? The only question that my director used to ask me was, are you feeling comfortable? Does it feel safe? And I was so scared to say yes to that because I knew that he would <laughs> make sure or do everything in his power to push me on the other side. And uh, I can't thank him enough for that because 
because I healed a lot of things within me uh, while I was discovering Sana and uh, and it also had an had an impact on my personal life as well. Like the relationships that I shared with with my loved ones, I could understand them better because I could understand Sana, and uh, and it's been the best experience of my life. Uh, well, I think it was a wonderful experience for me. I think I couldn't have asked for anything else. Sana was a great, great film uh, to be a part of and to be working with Sudhanshu is a privilege in itself. So I was very happy that I'm working with someone who's uh, so much into work and is about work because I'm all about work and I, I always want to work with people who are all about work and same is with Radhika. And I, I was just telling her yesterday as well that, you know, there are two kinds of actors. There's the one who's always obsessing ab about, you know, like they're always about themselves. And Radhika is all about, you know, the work and it's it feels really nice to be associated and to be working with such people. Upcoming Bollywood star Radhika Madan is in Goa for the ongoing IFI. She was spotted in Panjim wherein she was promoting her movie Sana, which is being screened at this IFI under the international competition category. Speaking to the media, she spoke about the film and also about IFI. Watch. Goa is just magical and would like to stay back and enjoy here in Goa, says actress Shika Talsanya. So it's always lovely to be in Goa and uh, yeah, I hope I can stay back and have some fun. Thank you ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The biggest weekend of her professional life only gets more complicated when Sana, a 28-year-old financial advisor, working in Mumbai, finds out she's pregnant. Speaking about the movie, Sana actor Nikhil Khurana spoke about women empowerment and how strong women are. Watch. So, movie ka bar mein brief kar uh, See, uh, it's a social drama. Or, uh, I don't want to tell you but the movie is about uh, a Radhika is a character, she gets pregnant and a journey about what she's going through in her life and how she's being judged by the society, by her parents, by everybody and yet she's uh, believing to like move forward in life. So it's something around that or Mirai Kitar is a guy next door who is a guy next door. He's trying to give, him a, give her a perspective. So, Tell me about woman empowerment, sir. How important is the character in uh, Yeah, I think it's very important because I, I genuinely believe that if you open the history, then obviously uh, women have been undermined. So obviously they are going to come up and I think it's the right movement. And I think uh, that's the way it should be. So what the things that are behind and 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 behind. Thank you, sir. Gujarati cinema needs more platforms like IFI to reach other regions and people within our country. To break barriers and reach wider audiences is the need of the hour for Gujarati cinema, stated veteran Gujarati actor Siddharth Randeria at a press conference organized on the occasion of the gala premiere of the film Hari Om Hari at 54th IFI in Goa today. Creating awareness about the beauty of Gujarati films and the essence of its captivating storytelling is very important, he said. With us, the cast and the crew of Gujarati film Hari Om Hari. It's being released in cinemas on 8th of December and is being screened here at FE54 under the gala premiere section. So uh, I'd like to introduce the cast and crew who are our guests today. We have with us uh, Nisarga Vaidya, who is the director of the film. 
uh, we have with us Siddharth Randeria, Ronak Kamdar, Vyoma Nandi, and Malhar Rathod, who are actor actors in the film. Hi guys, so uh, Hari Om Hari, uh, as the name suggests, it's a word play. It's about this character Om, uh, who is having a good time with his friend, who turns out to be his wife, and how this uh, how this relationship gets twisted, and a new character enters his life and changes everything and makes him get onto his life sooner. So that's more or less the premise. It's a love story. It's a fantasy rom com, and it's also sort of uh, the start of the love story of me and filmmaking also. And it's been a great time. I hope you guys see the film and then I could talk more. Thank you. Only sir. thing we, I don't know, somehow we couldn't have the subtitles, otherwise you would have followed it better. But probably what I wish is without hearing, I mean, not understanding the dialogues, if it conveys something to you, that's the best cinema, I believe. So that's the power of cinema, <laughs> I think. That's what I believe. That's yes. the best cinema. So that's a, would you like to say a few words about the Well, film? it's the same thing, not to repeat what he said. Uh, I would rather say something about the Gujarati film industry as it stands today. Well, uh, the industry has been quite old for last uh, how many decades? Any idea? About, about 50 three, years yeah, or 60? Yeah. Maybe more than 60 years well. But it has gone through a lot of uh, 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 changes over the years. There were kind of films, mainly there were folk films wi which were being done in Gujarati because the, uh, it was aimed at masses and they would uh, appreciate that more. And Gujarat has a very rich legacy of uh, folk tales, so which went on for almost say about 25, 30 years. Those kind of films ran very well and almost all the films completing more than 25 weeks or 50 weeks in cinemas because those were the days of single screen cinemas and they had a captive audience. Over the last 12 years, new generation of uh, filmmakers entered the arena and they started making what they label it as urban films. You see the earlier ones were more of folk tales and all. So then they started targeting urban films, uh, modern day problems. Gujarat has really prog progressed in uh, all the aspects as you all know, business wise, otherwise uh, development of cities. So the youth also has graduated to uh, accepting uh, different and uh, varied subjects. So where we stand just now is a very crucial stage of uh, Gujarati cinema making. Things are changing, changing at a rapid speed. What was happening about 10 years back and what is happening now is probably every year we are trying to change the narratives, the kind of stories we tell. There are historical films being made on big budget. But like any other regional uh, cinema, as you would uh, know, uh, budgets are the constraint very, very big constraint, which everyone faces, be it Assamese, Bengali, Marathi, anything when you call it regional and probably barring Punjabi, because they have a huge uh, overseas market, otherwise, and uh, they earn in big numbers. But otherwise, rest of the languages, they do have a stringent budget. But uh, still, with those budgets, newer producers are coming in. And to talk about Sanjay Ji, Sanjay Chabria, is the chairman and director of the company called uh, Everest Entertainment. And to his credit, he has more than 30 feature films in Marathi, which is a record of its sorts. And uh, this is his first venture into Gujarati. Welcome, sir. Thank you. So this is basically, I wanted to tell you about the scenario, what Gujarati cinema is going through at the moment. Everything said already, can you hear me? I think everything has been said already. I just want to say this movie is double special for me because this is my first Gujarati film and this is my first time I'm at IFI. So I am loving it. I'm having a great time. Thank you so much for having us over here. And uh, about the story, all I can say is it's not just a rom-com. It has a lot of twists and turns. I think once you see the movie, uh, you'll get to know about it. But yeah, thank you. Rabindra Kabya Rahasya by Sayantan Gosen is a movie set against the backdrop of Bengal, India. The film encapsulates the essence of Rabindranath Tagore's poetry, unraveling the mysteries 
inherent in human emotions and relationships. These cinematic gems promise to captivate audiences, profoundly reinforcing the significance of peace in our world to inspire collective actions, nurturing a better world and celebrating the essence of humanity. No event or festival is complete without its music and entertainment. Watch these glimpses of the red carpet. to be here you know I, I shot a TV series here a few years ago uh, and I haven't been back since so I'm excited to be back in India okay how tell me about your movie something uh, it's called quite like a girl it's uh, based uh, on uh, true events about a all-women boxing team in uh, DR Congo okay, how do you express the feeling of the e -field? How? How are you feeling you here? Uh, it's gorgeous. I mean, and it's so well organized. Everyone's been really polite, and it moved. I, like I've been to a lot of film festivals. This is very, very well run. So I want to ask you, fight like a girl. Hi. So, yes, I'm the girl that's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the uh, brief about your fight like a girl. Uh, it's basically about a young Congolese woman who was forced to work in the mines illegally, and then she escapes that and joins a boxing club. It was a great experience and shooting in Congo was really hectic. Um, as you know, there's a lot of uh, war and turmoil that's happening there right now. So to be in that environment was really a real experience for all of us. How do you feel about Ifi coming to Goa? I am so honored to be here. I'm so excited. It's my first time in India. So it's been so exciting. Everyone is so lovely, so welcoming. And I've had such a great time. How excited coming to the Ifi? Extremely excited. Uh, fortunately, this is my second time coming to Ifi with a film of mine. Just loving it as usual. Uh, I love meeting people. I love interacting with uh, everyone. Yeah. So. What do you think about like your movie has been selected for the I think it's a great honor. I think it's a matter of prestige that we are at one of the premium most uh, platforms in the country for film. And just knowing that a lot of people from all over the country are going to watch my film today, it just gives me a lot. Of well, that's all we have in today's special edition. I will see you back tomorrow once again, where we will take you on a tour of another day of this iffy. <laughs>